You got a question for me? I do. I just had a major shift in my existence. I lost my partner, but I've had um, a few readings with some mediums and intuitive healers. And one of the things that came up was that it's time for me to deal with my own abilities and do healing work, but I'm struggling as to which way to go with that. What gets your attention the most? What lights you up the most? I'm connecting with spirit, but I struggle with some blocks. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm so thrilled you're with us. This is the place where we blend spirituality and practicality to help you live a life full of joy and purpose. So we've got a whole bunch of callers on hold and we will get to them. It's always fun because I never know who's calling and I never know what their question's going to be. And I certainly never know what Spirit's answer is going to be because, you know, Spirit works through me and with me to help facilitate healing, answer life's unanswerable questions. It's always a blast. So let's go to our first caller. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Julie. Everybody, Chloe called in. Gosh, what, a few months ago, and her granddad had just passed, and she wanted to know if he had a message for her grandmother, and he said for Chloe to take her a daisy, just one daisy, and then somebody left a message on YouTube after watching the show and said, he's talking about a daisy a day, the song a daisy a day. So what happened? Did you tell your grandmother about that? Yeah. So actually, I think too, he, that was just like a song he used to sing when we were little too. I just didn't, I didn't put it together. Um, but yeah, she, she did know the song. So we thought it was really sweet. Did you take her a daisy? I didn't because she, she lives really far away. She's in Washington and I'm in Montana, but. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But you talked to her well, and he was so adamant about he didn't want you to take a, send her or take her a bouquet of daisies. He wanted one single daisy. And I just thought yeah. that was so sweet and so extraordinary that, that your granddad in heaven, you know, was referencing mm-hmm. a song. And it sounds like he used to sing it to you as, when you were little as well. Yeah, I think that it just like the whole meaning of the song, too, is that was really his personality and like how he loved my grandma and everyone, too. So it was definitely really sweet to put that together. Oh my gosh. I always say you can't make this stuff up. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Well, do you have a question for me? Yeah. So also last time we talked, um, we were talking about like my fertility issues. And so me and my husband, um, we actually went to Greece to do IVF and so it's a lot cheaper there, the U S really, really. Yeah. So we just went and we did a whole cycle. We did like the egg retrieval and um, a fresh transfer and we did transfer two embryos, um, but it still failed. And I think the reason it failed is because I wasn't on progesterone and um, I got my blood drawn here in the States, but it took the doctors seven days to get me the results. And so by the time I got them, it was just too late to take the progesterone. Um, So I just wanted to ask you if, um, Like if it did fail from the progesterone and if we go back, because we're hoping to go back in April, if it will work then, if we should do a whole, whole new cycle, or we do have three embryos in the freezer we could use, they're just not very good grades. So that's my question. Well, it's really interesting. You're telling me you have three (laughs) embryos because there are three baby spirits above your right shoulder (laughs) and they look like little orbs. They're not multiples. They're not, you're not going to have triplets from what I'm seeing. You could have twins though. Two of them are pretty close together, like almost side by side. And they're above your right shoulder and they look like a little tiny orb. The other one is stacked out in the back. Doesn't mean all three are going to incarnate. It means that three baby spirits have attached to your energy field. So it's less expensive for you to go to Greece and pay all your travel expenses and stuff and still do the IVF and it's less than it is to do it here? Yeah, it like it costs us like 10 grand to do the whole thing and be there for over a month, but we were quoted 55 grand here. And we have no insurance oh, coverage for it, so it's obviously a lot cheaper. Oh my gosh. 
Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Well, cool. Uh, yeah. So your question, is it, did they fail because you needed progesterone? I get a yes on that. I also heard that they just weren't ready. Those, those babies wanted to explore what it was like to not, you know, incarnate, let alone be mm-hmm. viable to, so uh, when we're in any kind of a situation, Chloe, especially I work with a lot of moms who are working to get pregnant. Everything is an experience. Every spirit has things they want to experience and explore. Your spirit is exploring IVF in Greece, for heaven's sakes. Your spirit is exploring going down that path. Your spirit is exploring what it, what do we need to do in order for me to be pregnant and to carry full term and deliver a baby? So these baby spirits that are attached to your energy field are participating in what your spirit wants to explore and experience. Now, likewise, your spirit is participating in what their little spirits want to explore and experience, whether that means they are, you know, embryos that are implanted that take, whether they're an embryo that doesn't take, whether they're an embryo maybe that doesn't go full term, you know, a fetus, it's any any one of a number of scenarios that you can play. Think of you and your baby's spirits as being like actors in a play, and you guys are exploring different versions of that play. So Mm -hmm. let's ask the the end-all be-all question. Will Chloe have another child? I get a yes that came in before the question was even asked. And then after I heard yes, I heard absolutely. So there you go. I think that's a really good, that's a really good chance. Will Chloe's trip to Greece in April is it in her best interest to do the whole egg retrieval procedure during that trip like she did last time? I get a yes. Yeah, yeah. so I think you that, do the whole, I, the whole thing uh, again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because so the ones we implanted were really good grades and the ones we have left over aren't. They're like a 30% chance eat for each that it would turn into a live birth. And the other ones was like, like 70% chance is what they told us. Okay. What I just heard was sometimes the run of the litters are the best ones. True. (laughs) Yeah. So. Yeah. uh, I just, I guess for me, it's hard to like, I don't want to go all the way back over there and then it not work because they weren't good grades or something. So I think that's why I'm like, well, maybe we should do a full another round so that we can hopefully get better quality. Yeah. Hedge your bets. What are the doctors saying? Well, we can't talk to our doctor till the 8th, so I can't okay. get his opinion yet, which is hard, too. <laughs> I like to wait. Okay. <clears throat> In the meantime, Chloe, get a book called The Better Baby Book by Dave and okay. Lana Asprey. And it's a story about Lana, who's an ER, who was an ER physician, and she was told she'd never conceive, and she restored her fertility and conceived two children in her 40s. So it talks about how to get your body really healthy and in the best shape to become pregnant and then how to keep healthy during pregnancy and then how to help your body heal after pregnancy. So the Better Baby book. Keep us posted. Let us know how it goes and give our love to your grandmother. I will. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, Jack. (laughs) Hey, Julie. How are you? I'm terrific. How are you? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Up in uh, Michigan, Grand Rapids. Okay. Grand terrific. Rapids, Michigan. Wonderful. Got a question for me? I do. I've had uh, really bad digestive issues and pain kind of under my left rib for years. It's just mm. 
it's getting worse and worse. I actually did have surgery on my ribs as well, but I'm not sure if the ribs are causing it or the digestion or there's something else with my aortic valve going on there. I'm just oh, really habits. not sure what's going on. What are your doctors saying? I've had every single gastro test available and they all come up normal. <laughs> okay. Which is all right. The case. Let me- let me get you on my radar and we'll see what's going on. For those of you that are first time joining us, how this works is I raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit because we're all spirits attached to a body having a human experience. And when we're attached to a body, Jack, our vibration is slower because of the mass of the body. And so I learned how to do all this stuff. I teach people all over the world how to do what I do. And I'm going to close my eyes for a nanosecond. I'm going to watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to hook into you in Michigan. And then I'm going to have a hologram of you in my mind's eye. And it's going to be as if I'm looking at an X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI. Something will be identified and then there'll be a healing. And I'm going to describe it to you in detail. So I want you to envision... Everything I tell I tell you I'm seeing in my mind's eye. And everybody listening, I want you to envision what I'm talking about as well, what I'm describing, because we're all going to do a collective healing on Jack. And it doesn't matter if you're listening real time, if you're listening tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, because time doesn't exist in the spirit world. So Jack, that's one of the big benefits when you call into the show and get a healing on Thursday night on my show is you have people all over the world that are participating in this healing. And you know, it's like the power of prayer, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, it's that kind of an effect. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from sweet home, Alabama, heading up to you in Michigan. All right, got you. Shooting energy from your feet up through the top of your head. Well, first of all, you're a twisted mister. Have you been to a chiropractor to get adjusted? I've no? been to dozens of chiropractors, yeah. Okay, dozens. all right. I'm yes. wa- uh, yeah, I'm watching a chiropractic adjustment happen first. And so your left side of your pelvis is, is out a little bit in front of your right. So I just watched you get leveled leveled out like a contractor, you know, uses a leveler on a two by four to make sure it's straight. So I watched that. Okay. Going into your gut, your gut looks inflamed. Do you have gas bloating, any kind of um, excessive amount? Like, yes. An excessive yeah, amount okay. of gas. It's just constant in my stomach. Yeah. So you have what's known as yeast overgrowth. You may have heard of candida overgrowth. Doctors aren't trained to treat this, but What I'm doing while I'm describing this to you is I'm clearing the yeast out of your GI tract. Have you been on antibiotics or steroids? Have you had mold exposure? Anything like that? Well, I just had the flu last week and I had some fluid in my lungs, so I'm I'm taking antibiotics at the moment. Okay. All right. Have you been on antibiotics much in the past since you've had stomach pain? Not a lot, probably 10 times, maybe. Okay. In your whole life or in the past few years? The last like 20 years, probably, yeah. Okay. That's enough because it usually takes two to three years for the gut biome to restore with every round of antibiotics that we take. And okay. people say, well, I'm, I'm taking probiotics. Well, probiotics are a waste of time when you have yeast overgrowth because it's like throwing grass seed on a field of weeds. You know, the weeds are going to choke out the grass. It's not going to grow. So we got to get the yeast mm-hmm. under control first. So you have so much yeast in your GI tract. It looks like a roux. If you mix flour and water together to form a sauce or a gravy in cooking, that's what this coating looks like in your GI tract. If you look at your tongue tonight when you brush your teeth before you go to bed, my guess is it has a mm-hmm. white coating on it, on sure. the surface of your tongue. So be sure and brush that. <laughs> Every time you brush your teeth, brush your tongue too to I help do, get I that do. on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so a couple of pointers. Number one, you want to do a gut biome test called Viome. V as in Victor, I-O-M-E dot com. Have you done it? Good. Great. I did that. Okay. Great. 
That's going to tell you what your superfoods are to incorporate it into your diet. It's going to tell you what the foods are for you to avoid. So that's number one. Number two, stay away from sugar and refined things. Yeast loves sugar. It's its favorite food. You know, you think about when you're making bread, what do you do? You put a little sugar in with the yeast and it makes it puff up, right? It makes it rise. So stay away from anything that has sugar in it or anything that's processed, like chips, cookies, crackers, stuff like that. Even if they're gluten-free, it's still refined and it absorbs like sugar and feeds the yeast like sugar. That's number two. Number three, Jack, stay away from fermented foods. Wine, beer, alcohol, kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurt, vinegar, soy sauce, kombucha, all that jazz. Because your gut is a fermentation factory when you have yeast overgrowth. And that's what the bloating is from. So when we Mm -hmm. eat or drink fermented things, it's just like pouring gasoline on a fire. Just makes it worse. So avoid those. Not for life. Just till we get your gut healthy. If you're going to eat fruit, peel it because there's tons of yeast on the peel of fruit. I don't expect you to peel a blueberry or a grape, but certainly buy organic as much as you can. But peel apples, peaches, Mm -hmm. pears, plums, you know, that kind of stuff. If you have leftovers, Jack, freeze and reheat them because yeast gets on leftovers in the fridge overnight. We think, oh, it's refrigerated. We can eat it for a few days. Eh, Not if you have a yeast issue. So I am the Ziploc bag queen of the universe. Everything goes in a Ziploc bag and I label it with a Sharpie on the front, you know, Jack's meatloaf, stay away (laughs) or whatever. And then what I do, Jack, is I'll make it flat. I'll get the air out of it. I'll lay it flat on a shelf in my freezer so it freezes flat. And then when it's frozen, I stack the packages upright like files in a file drawer. And you're going to save so much food and so much room in your freezer. And then lastly, you want to get a hold of some nice statin, N-Y-S-T-A-T-I-N, as in Nancy. It's a prescription here in the U.S., and it kills yeast on contact. It stays in the GI tract. There are no known side effects, and they give it to babies when they have thrush. So it's really safe, been around for like 80 or 90 years, and it is nectar of the gods. Lastly, you want to get in touch with Dr. Maria Amasanti. Let me give you her website. It's D-R-A-M-A-S-A-N-T-I.com, DrAmasanti.com. She's in London, Jack, but she's a, a an Oxford grad. She's brilliant. She's a general practice MD. She does functional medicine. She does holistic medicine. She does energy medicine. She's a graduate of my class. And I have nicknamed her the goddess of the gut. So she will help you get healthy in short order. Because the work that I do is on the energetic level. It's already healed. Now you have to help integrate it into your body. I had an email from a client that I sent to Dr. Maria earlier this week. And my client said, I have been sick for a dozen years and I've been to just a bunch of doctors and nobody could help me. After two months with Dr. Maria, I feel better than I've felt in all of that time and I'm just continuing to improve. So she just kept saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've changed my life. So between the energy healing and Dr. Maria, we will help you get your gut back in line and help you feel better. Okay, well, I appreciate it very much. You bet. And and all of those links are in the show notes. So anybody okay. listening, if you want to find those, the biome link, the Dr. Maria link, all that stuff's in the show notes. So I hope, I hope that helps you feel better. I promise you can right. heal from it because I had it for the first 40 years of my life. That's how I know so much about it. Wow. And for the last 25, I've been... I've been chugging along without any problem. So it is it is possible to heal from it. Okay, well, I appreciate it very much. All right, thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye, Jack. Bye-bye. Hi, Serena. Hi, Julie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Terrific. Where are you? 
I'm also in Michigan. Oh, okay. Terrific. Well, good. You got a question for me? I do. Um, My sister had a skiing accident in uh, December 28th. Oh, no. And uh, it was very bad, and she had to be airlifted to the hospital. And um, mm-hmm. her arm is numb now. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's got um, a lot of nerve pain, um, okay. but the arm, she can't move it. Oh, so no. um, right now they're doing um, hypnotherapy. She's just now allowed to start doing acupuncture and a lot of mind therapy to get mm-hmm. that more arm moving again, but she's in a lot of nerve pain. She has been on heavy medication since then. And um, yeah, we are all very, a little bit worried about it. That okay. she won't be able to move that arm anymore. What's her first name? Sara. Spell for me. S-A-R-A. S-A-R-A. Okay. So I would pronounce that Sarah. So you have a fancy way to pronounce it. So, okay. What I'm going to do, where is she? Is she close by she's you? In, no, she's in Switzerland. She's in Switzerland. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to you in Michigan and from you to your sister in Switzerland. I'm going to ask her permission if I can scan her. If she says, yes, I will. If she says, no, I won't because it's an ethical thing with me and all is not lost because we can still talk to her spirit. The way that I Mm -hmm. feel about that is Mm -hmm. if if somebody has pneumonia and they want to tell me how they feel, that's one thing, but I'm not looking at their chest x-ray without their permission. So that's how I operate from an ethical position. Did you talk to her about this? Yes. Okay. All right. And she says it's okay for me to scan her? Yes. Okay, great. I'm going to ask her anyways, just to be sure. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you. Got you. Heading east to Switzerland. It's going to take a minute. I I watch it go across the map. I watch it go across the Atlantic. I watch it go into Switzerland, you know, go across the western part of Europe and going in there. Okay. Okay. I'm talking to your sister. She goes, I know, it's fine. Okay, cool. All right, let me shoot energy into her. Okay, so everything else is working fine, right? From a neurological standpoint? Except her arm, yes. Except her arm. Is it her whole arm goes? Yeah. Yes, Her whole arm down. down to her fingers and her hand and everything? Yes, Okay. All right. What I'm watching is I'm watching, imagine that that nerve looks like a piece of aquarium tubing. And imagine when that aquarium tubing gets gunk inside of it, like uneaten fish flakes, fish poop, other minerals from the water. You either have to change the tubing in the aquarium or you clean it out right? So in this case, imagine that that's what her nerve looks like. And when I see injury to a nerve, it looks like gunk in a tube in an aquarium to me. That's the analogy that spirit gives me. So I'm watching a corkscrew spin. It's starting at her spine and it's going in that nerve all the way down her arm. It looks to me like her injury was in her, I would say in her upper arm, like midway is where most of the injury is from the nerve damage. Because do you know what an auger is? It's like a corkscrew and you can screw it in a garden like to plant bulbs, to make a hole, to put tulip bulbs or daffodil bulbs or something in there. And when it hits maybe clay or really compacted soil, it'll take a little bit of extra effort to go through that. That's what I'm watching happen in her upper arm. So that's going through there. Okay, it's just it's just gotten through that, going down the rest of her arm. Okay, now we're irrigating any kind of debris, dead cells, you know, other stuff that's in the nerve, irrigating that out of her hand. It comes flying out, the fluid comes flying out the end of her fingers. Imagine she's, 
her hand is a sprinkler and her fingers mm-hmm. are where the water flies out. So got that going. Now putting stem cell energy in there and light amber colored gel has sparkles in it because it's woo woo, got to have sparkles. And it reminds me of dippity Doo hair gel, which was a thing in the 60s and 70s when I was a kid growing up. It's kind of a watery gel. So that's being administered. And there's a corkscrew, there's a vortex rather that's spinning on the outside of her upper arm. And that centrifugal force is what transforms the stem cell energy into new body parts. This stuff's great. It'll fix anything. I mean, it's amazing, mm-hmm. the stuff I get to see. And sometimes it shows up on subsequent scans. And over the years, I've had doctors call me and say, what are you doing and how does this stuff work? So got that going. She's in physical therapy, I would imagine now. Not yet. No, it's Not too yet. fragile because the, her sho- shoulder blade and everything was shattered. Mm. So at this point, it's too fragile. She's... Um, yeah, she's not allowed to do any of that stuff yet. Okay. All right. I didn't even look at her bones. I was just focused on her nerve. Let's go back and let's do the bones. Did they put a new shoulder in? Yes. I think she can either we, we keep um, that artificial or they're trying to fix everything, what she had left from her own body with screws and pins yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I think the new shoulder joint's going to work the best for her from what I'm seeing because I see a, sh- a shoulder joint in there. And remember, okay. time doesn't exist in the spirit world. So she doesn't have a joint in there yet? A new one? No, I think they did in the original okay, sort of All right. That's what I'm seeing is a new shoulder. Okay. So that looks good. Putting stem cell energy on that too, just to help that heal I guess she'll make a full recovery. I think she'll make a she'll make a full recovery. Her nerve now looks pink to me. That that healing was done. It's just got to integrate into her body. In the meantime, I'm going to give you a website to have her go to because she can use her brain to help her heal. Have her watch this mm-hmm. show and listen to what this healing is because when we can visualize what I'm describing, it helps integrate the healing into the body because the brain has a tremendous capacity to heal the body. And have her yes. go to have her go to this website because this is a woman who we're going to have on the show. Actually, I'm interviewing her tomorrow. Her name's Brandy Gilmore, G I L L M O R E, Brandy Gilmore. Dot com, And she healed herself, got herself out of a wheelchair that she was in for a long time in excruciating pain, healed herself with her brain power. And she mm-hmm. has scans, thermography scans that show somebody in pain. We do an exercise like a healing or something on them. And then they do another scan and the inflammation is gone. So. I think that would be really a good thing for her to to check out and it'll give her hope and it'll give her some opportunities to use her brain to help her body heal in addition to this energetic oh, healing that just happened. Oh, great. Thank you. I will let her know. Okay. You're a sweet sister to call in on her behalf. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so okay. much for your help. It's much appreciated. You bet. Good luck to you and to her. Thank you so much. Hi, Alex. Good evening. Good evening to you. Thank you for um, letting me see you tonight. Oh, my honor. Where are you located? West Valley, Utah. Okay. Terrific. You got a question for me? (laughs) Whole list. I should have been tuning in a lot sooner. Um, my ex passed last Tuesday. Oh, uh, he don't please don't go there. He made everybody's life miserable. Oh, it was his soul was so angry. Hmm. Um, hopefully he's at peace now. 
Yeah. And I didn't realize, I thought I had gotten over it. I hadn't. Um, it was very abusive marriage, psychologically, physically, emotionally. But I just feel blocked and I don't know how to push through. And it's one person said, I'm sorry earlier. And I let into her. She didn't deserve it. And I, please help. Okay. When you say you feel blocked, what does that mean? Um, when I try to sit down to do work, I can't find the paperwork I need. I just can't, I feel like I can't move forward. Mm-hmm. I, I'm feeling more that I can now that he has passed. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of energy clearing and decades of suppressed negative resentment. Okay. Resentment right. is negative. So I apologize. That was. <laughs> no, I think it was perfect. I think your description was perfect, girl. All right. A couple of things. First of all, all that snarky behavior stayed with his body when he died. His spirit is pure love, number yes. one. Okay. Hard for us to imagine when we're, when we're thinking of somebody who was just a wicked human and we think, ah, you know, how could that be? But it's just how it is. I've heard it a bazillion times from spirit. So that's number one. Number two, this isn't about him. This is about you clearing. So I have yeah. a little exercise for you if you're game. Yes. I want you to take a piece of paper and a pen or a notebook, whatever you want. I want you to write it. Don't type this. Write it with your hand. And I want you to just start writing everything that upset you about him. Absolutely he was everything. That summarizes it. Okay. So Absolutely. you want to do you want to do that, do it over a, a day or more, whatever works. I don't care about sentence structure. I don't care about grammar. I don't care about spelling. When you start writing, you're going to be surprised what comes out. Because Alex, those memories that are in your head that you've locked in there just to survive, they're going to come out. Okay, so write it down on a piece of paper. When you're done, you'll know it. And you can do this exercise more than once if you want. But when you're done, you'll know it. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take that writing, everything that you wrote down, and take it to a park near you that has grills in it that you can cook hot dogs and hamburgers on. And I want you to light it on fire. I want you to burn that paper and watch the smoke go up into the air because that releases all that negative energy, all those emotions, all that stuff that's got you stuck. When you write it down, it gets you out of your body onto the paper. When you burn it, it releases it. Okay, it's symbolic and it's an energetic release. I don't want you doing that near your home because we want that energy to dissipate away from your home, first of all. And secondly, if you can go to a park that has lots of trees and green, green stuff around it, that gets alchemized by all of nature, all that negative energy. Okay, so try that. Do that more than once if you need to, because you may do it once and then it may kind of let the genie out of the bottle and you'll think of other things that you want to want to mm -hmm. get rid of, emotional things, and do it again. But take it to a park, you know, like don't cause a forest fire. That's why I say burn it in a grill. <laughs> Take some matches or, or one of those Bic lighters, you know, that you can light a grill yes. with it and uh, and burn it. And you're going to be amazed at how much better you feel. Okay. Okay. All righty. Okay. And then call in another time and we can talk to him or not, whatever. But I think that's your first, that's your first action item is go write all that stuff out and then burn it away from your home well as i tell everybody 
hopefully his soul is at peace now because he did oh, not is. have peace in this life. I have no yeah. idea why, but he just didn't, and he made, and he caused a lot of pain okay. in the lives of many others. Mm -hmm. Well, he's happy, he's healthy, he's whole now. Yes. And all good. that snarky behavior stayed with his body when he died. His spirit is pure love. And you know what? You may find that you have, an, a, you have a relationship with him now that's wonderful when you're ready for it because he's pure love. And it would be interesting to talk to him. So we can do that another time. Go, go, write, you. your, go write your feelings out. Okay, sending you a big hug. Thank you. You're welcome. This week, our question comes from... Gina. And Gina lives in Aurelia, Ontario, Canada. If you want to submit a question, go to AskJulieRyan.com on my website and you'll see right when you get on the homepage, it'll say, Ask Julie a question. You can submit a question. We choose one every week to read on the show. And this is the one that was chosen for this week. Okay. Gina says, hello, Julie. Thank you so much for the opportunity to submit a question. I've been experiencing brain fog for several years, and I'm scared that it's going to have a significant impact on my career. I can't remember anything, even the basics. People believe that I'm amazing at what I do, and I feel like an imposter. I'm currently looking for a new job because there have been multiple layoffs at my company, and I'm concerned that I won't know enough to perform well at a new company. Are you able to tell me what's causing the brain fog and how to help it? The best way I can describe the sensation I have is that it feels like my brain is thick, dense, and foggy. I think most of us have experienced brain fog probably many times in our lives. And so we can relate to what Gina is saying. And then she says, side note, I've been on maternity leave for two of the last four years. So perhaps my forgetfulness is in part due to being out of practice and the haze of early motherhood. Thank you so much, Gina. Here's my response. Hi, Gina. First, huge congrats on the newest addition to your family. Welcoming a little one into the world is a journey unlike any other, filled with both challenges and joys. Let's talk about something that many new moms and others, including myself, have experienced, brain fog. It's like trying to navigate through a dense fog where focus, memory, and energy seem to dissipate. Researchers at Emory University have delved into this phenomenon, describing it as feeling like our brains are working on a reduced capacity. When I've had it, I feel like a dog that's wet. I feel like I want to shake my head, you know, like a dog does to get the water off of them when they come in and they're out in the rain doing their business. I always feel like if I shake my head, I can shake off the fog. I haven't had it in a long time, but when I had leaky gut and used to overgrowth, I had it all the time. I went on to say from personal experience, I found that tackling brain fog starts with nurturing your gut and balancing hormones. To get answers for you, I tapped into your energy field and noticed a few things. Picture this, a wilted plant in need of water. To me, that's a telltale sign of hormonal imbalance, something quite common among new moms. By adding some energetic estrogen, it was incredible to watch how you perked right up. If I see a woman, whether it's a young woman or a woman my age or older, and she looks like a wilted plant, she needs estrogen. I shoot energetic estrogen into her. She just perks right up like watering a plant. I also sense something else, mold. Whether it's lurking in your home or office, it can wreak havoc on your well-being. Thankfully, with a bit of energetic clearing, we address that issue too. And then there's the matter of leaky gut another piece of the puzzle. Again, through an energetic healing, we work to get your gut healthy. Now, here's the important part. These healings may take time to fully integrate into your body. That's where your physical efforts come into play. When I work with somebody and I'm doing energetic healings, it'll integrate into the body, but normally it'll need something done on the physical side too. So the energy healing is part of the healing equation, but we need to help it along from the physical side. 
And I said, uh, seek out a physician who specializes in bioidentical hormones to ensure your levels are optimal. Someone like Maria Amasanti, MD, dramasanti.com, dramasanti.com, who my clients rave about for her expertise in gut health can also be incredibly helpful. So I'm saying, get your hormones fixed. Get your hormones fixed. Sounds like get your muffla fixed. Get your hormones fixed and then get your gut fixed too. Lastly, don't ignore the mold situation. It might be worth looking into getting your home tested. And please give your sweet baby a hug from me. So anybody that's got brain fog, it's 99% of the time a gut thing. You get your gut healthy, the brain fog is going to go away. New moms, it's very, very, very common that your hormones are still out of whack, even two to three years, you know, after the baby's born. So you want to look into that as well. So Gina, I hope that helps. Hi, Kimmy. How are you? I'm terrific. How are you, my girl? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I sure can. Okay. Where are you? Awesome. Awesome. I am in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Oh, good. How are things up there? Well, it's 31 degrees and snowing. Ooh, you guys haven't, you've had some snow this winter so far, right? You've had, yeah, yeah, a little bit, but but not crazy like you have in years past, right? Um, Correct. Correct. I I just yeah. moved back about four months ago. I was living in Colorado for almost seven years. Oh, so you're used to that white stuff. Yep, I yeah. am. Okay. Badly. Well, you got a question for me? <laughs> I do. Um, in regards to life path, um, I just had a major shift in my existence, um, and I lost my partner. Um, about 11 months ago and I helped him spiritually move on. Um, the experience was beyond amazing, even though it was a terrible, you know, death is not fun. Um, Mm. but I've had, um, a few readings with some mediums and intuitive healers. And one of the things that came up was that it's time for me to, you know, deal with my own abilities and become, do healing work, but I'm struggling as to which way to go with that. Okay. What are you thinking? What, what gets your attention the most? What lights you up the most? I'm connecting with spirit, but I struggle with some blocks. Okay. Well, you're grieving, you know, grief is a low yep. vibration. Spirit doesn't communicate yep. easily on the, I feel crappy channels because the vibrations too low. So, right. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know that it's to be expected that somebody's going to be able to communicate easily when you're in the middle of deep grief. So yep. that's number one. But the fact that communicating with deceased loved ones is really the first thing that came to your mind, that's where you're being led. And, yep. and for you to focus on that and focus how you want to roll that out and do that. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, take my class. You'll get really good really fast. It'll ramp up whatever skills you have. I mean, in, yeah. in a weekend, you can take it online in May. You can take it in person in November, but people have already started signing up for both. We have limited okay. seats. So you want to look at that. And that will get you into a group. Of course, I think mine's stellar because it is, but it's, it is, um, we have people from all over the world and the key with this, Kimmy, is to practice it. And in mm-hmm. my angelic attendant training class, we have nine practice sessions a week that are free oh, wow. for the rest of your life. So all different times on different days, graduates from all over the world get together. Your skills really ramp up quickly. Okay. when that happens. So consider taking my angelic attendant training. That's number one. Number two is follow where you're led. I think we get paralyzed when we expect to have all of our steps mapped out for us. Mm-hmm. And that's not how life works. You know that. I mean, when we think about it, we all know that. 
I founded mm-hmm. nine companies in five industries. I never follow a business plan. Nobody ever follows a business plan. We never follow okay. a life plan because life happens. Yep. So you're going to be led. The fact that you're saying you want to help people by communicating with spirit, which by mm-hmm. the way, is research shows is the number one way to have people help people heal grief is to be able to communicate okay. with their deceased loved ones. You okay. certainly know all about grief with, with what I you've do. been through. So take a step. You're going to be led to another step. If it's interesting, if you want to know more, take that step, no matter how small it is. It may be you just look at a website. It may be that you talk to somebody about it. It may be something Mm -hmm. else. You're going to be led to the next step and the next step and the next step. And then it's all going to be laid out for us and for you. We don't need to swim upstream. We can go with the current, go with the flow. So, yeah. That's what I've been trying to do. I've been taking baby steps for the last many months, Reiki, and I took an intuitive development class. I've done some... Um, you know, readings with some people, but I just, I feel blocked sometimes. And I think yeah. a lot of it, it has to do with the grief. Um, and I'm fascinated by end of life stuff. So that's kind yeah. of where I've been going. Yeah. Well, I had a gal look, I don't remember what the episode is, but her name is um, uh, Lenore Matthews, Dr. Lenore Matthews. And she lost her husband and I think she was 35. It was very unexpected and was in the throes of grief. Well, she's a PhD researcher. And so she started doing research on how grief helps people heal. If mm-hmm. they can talk mm-hmm. to their, you know, and if they can talk to their deceased loved ones, that helps heal the grief, right? We've got to go and through I, that grieving process that. to heal. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can I've been tell. Doing that. Yeah, lots of symbols and signs from him, for sure. I love that. And the other blocks are fear, just flat out fear. You're right. How am I going to do it? Is it going to work? How are we going to make this work? How are we going to happen? What's it going to look like? And fear paralyzes us. Mm -hmm. So when you take a step, you're going to be led to the next thing. The other thing is, have you heard me talk about the two-minute rule? No, no. Oh, honey, this is going to change your life. Two-minute rule. Thoughts, when they come into our heads, thoughts don't originate in our heads. They come in from the ethers based on what we're thinking about. Every thought is neutral till we give it a meaning. Thoughts that feel good are true. Thoughts that feel badly are based in fear. Now, the key is, is it a real fear or is it a fake fear? If it's a real fear, that's called a rational fear. You want to change the conditions before you're injured or killed. Like get out of the road before the truck runs you over if you're standing in mm-hmm. the middle of the, of the street. All other fears, and Kimmy, that's 99.9% of the thoughts we think that feel bad. 99.9% of them are based in what's known as irrational fear. They're fake news. Mm-hmm. They're fake fears. We're running late to a doctor's appointment and we're stressing out and we're going, oh my God, you know, and then our imagination kicks in. If I don't get there in time, then I'm not going to be able to see the doctor and then I'm not going to get well and I'm going to have to wait a year before I get another appointment. You know, it just goes on and on. So what we Mm want to do is we want to let the body know, okay, this is an irrational fear. This is fake. We don't want the body going into fight or flight because we lose clarity. The blood drains Uh from our brain goes to our heart and our extremities so we can run away from that fear, even if it's we're running late for an appointment. Body didn't know the difference between that and getting chased by a tiger. So yeah. okay. when you have a thought that feels badly, you just ask yourself, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? It's a yes or no yeah. answer. The answer is yes. Okay. Get out of the road before the truck runs you over. If the answer is no, you're going to chuckle a lot of the time because you're going to think, oh God, quit being such a drama queen. And it'll keep you out of fight or flight. And then spirit can communicate with you with solutions. So Mm -hmm. the beauty with the two minute rule, Kimmy, is it's free and it's convenient because it works anywhere your brain is and your brain's usually with you wherever you are. So it's convenient. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, 
Thank Sign you up so for much. My class. I appreciate it. Sign up for my class, AskJulieRyan.com. Yeah. Okay. I'll it, look it's, into it. It's run there. Okay, girl. You got Thank this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Hi, Jay. Hi, Julie. Gratitude to you. You are so wonderful. To... So oh, you. you sweet thing. Oh, thank you. Where are you located? Uh, I'm located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. Terrific. You got a question for me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have been suffering with headaches uh, ever since I'm 13 years old. Oh, um, no. Yeah, it comes uh, uh, after my first, um, um, I had my daughter, it's coming every day. I take okay. all the all the counter medications. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the times it works. Uh, that is the only drawback in my life. Otherwise, I am happy, healthy, wealthy, <laughs> young, energetic. Blissful, beautiful, bountiful. Look at you. God bless you. Okay, Jay. Uh, let me get you on my radar. Let's see what's going on. You know, right off the top of my bed, or off the top of my bed, off the top of my head, I am getting that it's probably hormone related and gut related. And when you take that over the counter medication for a long time, it really messes up your gut. So we want to get you off that, get your headaches handled. How young are you? I'm 60, 64, okay. I will be April, by April. Okay. Just in okay. And you've had this since you you had your daughter. How long ago was that? 38 years. 38. That's a long time for headaches, girl. Holy mackerel. All right. Here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to Indy. Got you. Yep. You look like a wilting plant. So I'm shooting some energetic estrogen into you. Just what I was talking about with our question of the week from Gina up in Canada. And then do you have gut issues? Does your stomach hurt at times? Do you have gas, bloating, any of no. that brain fog? No. No. Do, the head no. do you wake up with the headaches? Um, yeah. Not really. Uh, as soon as uh, I start my work at six o'clock, um, once I start the computer and uh, I'm going great, and when I, if I receive a letter from my supervisor or my manager or something uh, stress related, it just comes like that. Okay. Um, uh, when I have a headache, I cannot take any food. Because the digestive stops. Um, uh, so you uh, go into fight or flight, what we were just talking about. Yeah, yeah from stress. But, but I, I am brave. I am intelligent. Uh, I am top at my work. Um, mm -hmm. Like if, if class full of people... If a teacher asks something, I will be the first one answering the question. I feel they're mm -hmm. asking me. I, I mm -hmm. will be always first. Um, mm -hmm. That anxiety may be creating headache. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's a combination of stress hormones and gut. So I, here's a, here are a few action items for you, Jay. Number one, Call a couple of compound. I put energetic estrogen into you. While we're talking, I'm cleaning out your gut. I put energetic estrogen into you. You know, we're girls, so we can multitask. So it's one of our yeah. superpowers as females. So we're doing that. Call a couple of compounding pharmacies. Do you know what that is? Do you know what a compounding pharmacy is? No, but I will find okay. out. <laughs> it's a pharmacy <laughs> that makes prescriptions for individuals instead oh. of just pouring pills from a big bottle into a little container to give you. They make prescriptions from scratch. So call, just, just Google compounding pharmacy, put your zip code in there and they will pop up. I would call a couple of them, ask them who's prescribing bioidentical hormones okay. through them. 
Okay. Ask them if any of them are gynecologists. I have a preference for gynecologists to help us with hormones because they're experts on our girly parts. So let's, you know, let's go to an expert on the parts that are going to be affected. That's number one. Number two, bioidentical hormones. Have you ever heard that term before, Jay? No. Okay. It's what our bodies make when we're young and fertile and we have the ability to pop out babies. As we age, our hormone levels diminish. That's why women go into perimenopause and menopause. When our hormones diminish, I like to say Mother Nature says, oh, she's not able to propagate the species anymore, so we don't really need her. And that's when degenerative things start to happen. We can fool Mother Nature by having her think we're 35 instead of 65 with bioidentical hormones. They are the exact molecular composition that our bodies make naturally. That's why they're called bioidentical. The synthetic hormones, which are the birth control pill, the IVF medicine, big pharma menopause medicine, are called synthetic hormones. They have extra molecules added to their formulas so they can be patented. Most of them are made out of pregnant horse mare urine. Those are the ones you want to stay away from. You want to get on the bioidentical. That's number one. That's going to help you sleep better. It's going to keep your brain, your heart, your bones, your skin healthy. There was a study actually that came out, I believe, in October of last year, Jay, that said that mm-hmm. women that get on bioidentical hormones in their 40s and 50s have a 40% less likely chance of getting dementia or Alzheimer's. 40%? That's a big number. So hormones protect us, number one. Number two, I would talk to Dr. Maria, dramasanti.com it'll be in the show notes. I would talk to her. I would have her help you get your gut healthy. Okay. Number three, two minute rule. What I just talked to Kimmy about. When you start feeling stressed, when your boss sends you something, I mean, is he snarky with you or he's just sending a request and you get stressed? No, no, no. just in general, everybody feels the same way with those two people. That's fine. Uh, okay. With your boss, uh, everybody feels like he's he's just kind of like a bully? Okay. No. So, le- no yeah. They put, they put the time to complete within certain time. We have to finish this match and they find fault with what we do or something like that. But it's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm not, they're not picking on me, but when the letter comes in general, that like like if I have to go somewhere or somebody is coming to me, then the headaches comes. So that's why I don't involve or anything. I don't promise anything, or I don't invite anyone to my house because it causes more headaches to me. Um, okay. All right, so use the two-minute rule that we just talked about with Kimmy. When you get that, you get that, okay, I need this project done by this date, this time, and you're feeling stressed, go, okay, if I don't do this project on this at this time, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? The answer is going to be no, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what that's going to do is that's going to keep you out of fight or flight because what happens when we go into fight or flight, Jay, are cortisol levels shoot up, our heart rate shoots up, our blood pressure shoots up. We have an immune response, right? Inflammation shoots up. What's inflammation cause? Your headache. I still think you got a hormone thing and a gut thing going on. So let's get those in balance too, and then use the two minute rule. So those are your your three action items. Hormones, gut, two minute rule. And you will be a new woman. And then you can have people come visit you at your house. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You bet. Thanks for calling. You You too. Hi, Miss Mary. Hi again. I'm back this time. I'm here in Michigan. 
I, what is this like? Is this a Michigan show tonight? I got all these Michiganders. That's, well, that's what I was wow. thinking too. So okay. I have a fun question for you tonight, an animal question. Yeah. 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 So one of my rescues, um, he's a little beagle boy. We named him Busby, Busby the Beagle. Oh, cute. And yeah, he came to me from rescue with chronic injuries. Oh. He, he has a uh, dislocated shoulder, so he oh. limps, and also um, some damage to his mouth, um, a snaggle tooth, which we've had extracted. Um, but some other teeth were damaged, and I noticed that he wheezes a lot. So I'm wondering if there was some damage done to his nasal cavity. Mm. So the uh, question is, if you can connect with Mr. Busby, I'm mm -hmm. wondering what happened to him. Yeah, he got beaten. I'm getting that already. Somebody beat him up really badly. Some nut job. Yeah. What's his vet saying about his shoulder? That's that's where the energy went first. That's his biggest issue is his shoulder. It is an issue. So he's been to three specialists mm -hmm. at his regular vet. Mm -hmm. And we because they're a mystery, because they can't talk to us, the vet said the injury is chronic. You have two options, Miss Mary. They both told me the same thing. You can either go through with a surgery, which there is a very high percentage it's not going to be successful because, to put things back in place, Julie, I'm sorry, um, mm -hmm. because all of the ligaments and the muscle musculature has changed, stretched, and dogs don't understand recuperation. Mm -hmm. They don't, it's very hard to keep them still. Right. Um, enough to recuperate. So the other option that they gave me was amputation. Two specialists nah. gave me the same nah. option. That's what I said, too, because the little guy's yeah. getting around. He's getting yeah. around. Yeah. Now. How long have you had him? I've had him for two years. Um, okay. I had three rescues altogether. Oh, my god. This gosh. is a passion of mine. Oh, passion. I love dogs more than people, Julie. Um, so what I'm watching is I'm watching that shoulder. Um, it's like I'm watching an animated movie where all the pieces and the parts came apart. And like yes. a child's wooden puzzle, they're getting put back together. Like they're getting rearranged and getting put back together in the healing when I focused on it. it I've seen this. This is a new kind of healing that I've just started seeing recently where it's like slow motion. All those pieces come apart and they get kind of rearranged into the proper position and then they all go back in and then the whole thing is covered with stem cell energy and with a vortex above it that's solidifying the healing it's getting all those you know parts put back together does he seem to be in pain well that was going to be my next question to you so from day one the vets are recommending pain meds which having health issues myself i know that pain meds come with side effects and right. some of those side effects can be damage to major or organs like you know liver and such and because he's young or at least we believe he's young um when he came to me two years ago they estimated his age to be under two i get he's four um, right now i get he's four. okay okay so that would make sense yeah so I was fearful of putting him on pain meds at such a young age because, of course, I love him so much and I want him to be around for a very, very long time. I don't want to cause mm -hmm. liver problems or other issues that would shorten his life. Mm -hmm. But um, on the humane side, he's a very, very stoic dog. Very mm -hmm. stoic dog. Uh, I mean... Maybe the be beating explains it. He's not fearful of me. He's loving, but um, just such an introvert. He won't come up and lick your face like a normal dog or whatever. Instead, he'll come up and 
he'll bury his face in your tummy mm. or bury his face um like like he's shy like you know i can't look at you sweet no. as can be so that was another thing i wanted to know uh of course i want my animal to be comfortable and cared for yeah. and not hurting. can you pick up on whether or not yeah. this time yeah i'm not seeing inflammation in his shoulder right now. So Busby, are you in pain? He's saying at times, I do see arthritis in there that I've cleaned out. Arthritis, Mary, looks to me like that white crunchy stuff that's on a battery that's expired. You know, yeah, I could leave it I've in the flashlight too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like white crunchy stuff. So I've cleared that out. I've put stem cell energy in there. There is a product that I've discovered in the last couple of months, and it's Beam Minerals, B-E-A-M. I'm taking Beam that because Good of girl. you. Great. Yeah. I, I've been on them for two months. Oh, my God. I have a lot of energy normally, but holy mackerel, ramp it up because it's amazing how well they work. And Mary, they have this spray that's called, um, I think it's called uh, like... Light lights or something like that. You'll see it if you go to beamminerals.com and you spray it on Instalites, Instalites. You spray it on its minerals and it. if you spray it on something that hurts, I'm telling you, it gets rid of the pain. Oh, I had this a is not the oral one then. This yeah, is not yeah, the oral but in, one? in addition, in addition to this, it's called Instalites and hmm. it's this spray and I had a girlfriend here this past weekend who was having back pain and I sprayed her with it. And in the first five minutes, she goes, yeah, the pain's better, but I still have it. So I sprayed her again. And after that, the pain was gone and it stayed gone for the rest of the day. They do have the same thing for pets. So I yeah. would check that out. Beam Minerals, well, B-E-A-M, was... Minerals.com yeah. and, and use. Julie, yeah, use Julie Ryan in the checkout. I'm telling this to everybody that's listening. Use Julie Ryan in the checkout and you'll get 20% off. I'm telling you guys, this stuff's amazing. I, I feel like I'm doing an infomercial for them, but I, it's so impressive. Well, I'm on my first full two weeks and okay. I'm feeling subtle differences, but we're talking about 30 plus years of chronic pain that snowballed. So okay. I'm feeling subtle differences. I have good days and bad days, mm -hmm. but I'm feeling more energy and less pain. Perfect. Perfect. Get some um, of that. I think it's called Insulate. I got to look it up. But if you go on their website, beamminerals.com and look for the pain relief and then look at their animals products. And I would mm -hmm. get some of that for Mr. Busby. He's going to be fine. I There's no way I would amputate that dog's leg. No way. Oh, no, I wasn't he thinking the amputation because he gets yeah. around. I mean, his yeah. whole ankle is starting to turn out. I mean, you know, he's having compensatory type problems, you know, because mm -hmm. of the injury. The um, mm -hmm. reason I'm asking you is if the poor guy is in terrible pain, then I will I will get him those pain meds. I don't think he is, not from what I'm seeing. Yeah. Okay. So I would get him some of that B mineral stuff and try that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Give him a hug for us. I will. All righty. Bye, Mayor. Okay, everybody. That's it for this week. Fun show as always. Sending you lots of love from Sweet Home Alabama. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. See you next Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan. And like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.